Now, y'all know me. I'm not one of those Ravens fans that feel like every single Raven has to be ranked at the top five or at number one at every single position. But to put J.K. Dobbins at 26, and you even got a rookie running back who never even touched an NFL football yet ahead of him? BFF, we got to do better, man. Don't get mad. Uh -huh. It's just what it is. What it is. Yeah, we talking sports. Shout out to Graven Vance. Yeah, this feels like a dream. So YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraving here with another video and in this video we are here to talk about a list and y'all know me I hate making lists I hate creating lists I hate when people say hey engraving who's your top five who's your top ten this and that but I love going over other people's lists and this list was created by PFF to list their top 32 running backs heading into the 2021 and 22 NFL season. Before we get into this, uh, I, I love y'all team. Keep it clean. Appreciate y'all watching the videos. Appreciate y'all listening to the podcast. Today is Wednesday, so another episode of the podcast is coming out. Uh, so y'all stay on the lookout for that. Um, thank you for all the positivity. Shout out to all the team. Keep it clean. Patrons, thank you for showing extra support. And y'all keep on just spreading that love to everybody. Show people love. Show different people love. People that you don't normally show love, show them love to because they, they need it too. Even if you know somebody that's usually always grumpy like this and walking around all mad and angry like that, get him a hug or something. Well, I know you're supposed to be distanced from people, but get him a virtual hug. Send him a nice little text. Send him a nice little message, man, because it can make them go from being like this to being like, oh, like that. So it can make a big difference. Appreciate y'all. Now, PFF, I still appreciate y'all now, but I don't appreciate what you guys did with this one. J.K. Dobbins. Ranked the 26th running back heading into this upcoming season. And let's look at how they ranked him, why they ranked him 26th. It is tough to separate the performance of running the running back from the boost that he gets playing with a Baltimore Ravens offense that has quarterback Lamar Jackson distorting their opportunities. But J.K. Dobbins was extremely impressive in limited carries in his first year. 22 of his 153 carries went for at least 10 yards. That's crazy. I didn't even know that. That's that's a lot. So, <laughs> I just, I don't understand. 26? We're going to go through this list. But first, let's, let's even see what Sarah Ellison had to say. Because she chimed in. Shout out to Sarah Ellison, by the way. Uh, she said, he led all running backs in yards per carry. Now, he certainly did. Um, and that's a beautiful thing, averaging six yards a carry. Now, we know that he wasn't a starter the entire season. He did get uh, some nice plays here and there at the beginning of the season. We remember when a lot of us, especially myself, was very frustrated because Ravens were trying to feed everybody and they were trying to keep everybody happy because they had Mark Ingram, they had J.K., they had Gus Edwards. They would run all three of them. And when you saw J.K. come in, he would be hot. And then they would be like, oh, no, nope, time to feed our other guys. So that took away from his opportunities, but later on down the road, uh, they just limited it to J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards. And, and shout out to Gus Edwards, too. But I know since it's only being 32 running backs, they, they ranking it by team. So they chose to go with J.K. over Gus. That's debatable, too, but you can understand. But anyway, uh, he is number three among rookies in, run, in, in rushing yards. So he got the third most rushing yards by any rookie running back last year. Okay, cool, man. And that, oh, he got 805 rushing yards? And that limited action that he was in? That's crazy when you think about it. That's, he almost got 1,000 yards. And he was sharing, think about that. Think about how significant that is. He got 800 yards, over 800 yards, and he shared carries with Mark Ingram, with Gus Edwards, and with Lamar Jackson. He shared carries with all of those guys. And still got over 800 yards. That's insane. And he had nine touchdowns. Um, but anyway, I just, just 26. 26 for him to have been able to do that, especially with the shape and the condition that the offensive line was in all year. All year, both before and after injuries. The, the offensive line was rough. So for Jake, 26, you know what? Let's look at the other people that are on this list because – I don't know, man. We're going to look at the people before him and after him, of course, because it's, it's ranking 32 running backs. So number one is Derrick Henry from the Tennessee Titans. Okay, I can understand that. 
And, and they said, we debate how much running backs can truly outperform their environment, but nobody has done that more than Henry over the past two seasons. Henry has uh, 2,758 yards after contact since the start of the 2019 season, almost 1,000 more than any other back that span. Derrick Henry being number one, that's fine. I got no complaints there. I got no arguments there whatsoever. Derrick Henry is that dude at running back. And for this guy, you got to respect his game. But so Because for this guy to amass over uh, 2,000 yards in this day, 2,000 rushing yards in this day and age of football, that's insane. You got to give credit where credit is due. For him to have done that in, in what was that, two years ago? Because I don't think he did it last year. I don't even remember. But... For him to have done that and for him to amass just the the, the, the yards that he gets, got to give credit where credit is due. Derrick Henry being number one, I got no problem with it at all. Number two, Dalvin Cook, who just so happens to train with J.K. Dobbins. Dalvin Cook is nice too. He's nice. And the thing about him, last year he seemed to be getting healthier and staying healthier. Uh, that's, that's the only knock on Dalvin Cook it has been the health. He stays healthy. He's easily one of the best running backs in the league. So I got no problem with that one either. Number three, Christian McCaffrey. Now, obviously, last year he played like either three or five games, so he missed a big chunk of the year. So this is, again, this is for heading into the 2021-2022 season. So this is a projection. And with Christian McCaffrey, with everything that he's done as a running back, he's a running back, he's a receiver, he's a slot guy, he, he's all of that stuff. So that's cool. This is based off of what he's done before, uh, obviously when healthy, and what they expect him to do. No problem with that either. Nick Chubb, number four. He's another do-it-all type of back. He catches passes out of the backfield. He's a physical guy. Uh, he could break away big runs. He's nice. And, and us Ravens fans are very familiar with Nick Chubb. Uh, we see him two times a year. Number five, Alvin Kamara. Another very uh, complete back, versatile back. And you know in that, that Saints offense, we'll see how it changes with Jamison, I was about to say Jamison Hensley, with Jameis Winston uh, taking over for Drew Brees, even though they, they said it's going to be a competition between him and Taysom Hill, but it's not going to be a competition between him and Taysom Hill. With Jameis Winston taking over, we'll see if they still are pass happy. I mean, we know Jameis Winston loves to pass that ball, uh, but with Alvin Kamara, the running backs there, they, they eat a lot because they got to catch a lot of passes. You gotta, if you're going to be a running back for the New Orleans Saints, you got to be able to catch that ball. But Alvin Kamara being up there, no problem. Aaron Jones from the Packers. He has been certainly breaking out over these past couple of years. Uh, last year was no different. He did his thing. Uh, he full time starter. He is that guy, and it was a uh, it was a, a bit of a scare for Packers fans because they thought they were going to lose Aaron Jones. They thought he was gone, but he ended up resigning with them. Uh, now, will their quarterback resign? That's the real question. But this ain't the video for that. Number seven. Saquon Barkley from the New York Giants. Of course, he got injured last year, missed the majority of the year. But again, this is based off of projections. Saquon Barkley is nice with it. He's a beast. Just everything. So, okay, cool. That's fine. Now, here's where it starts to get a little bit shaky for me moving forward. It, this is where it really gets shaky. Because you think about it, the Ravens, we know, like, how can a Ravens team... A Ravens team that runs the ball so much. These dudes do nothing but run the ball. Again, like I always say, running is their first, second, third, fourth, and fifth option. Passing, it's like sixth and seventh. You know what? Passing is just six. Going back to the run is the seventh option. So how can a team that runs the ball so much and so effectively too, how can they not have either one of their top two running backs on this list? Even J.K. Dobbins, because we know we saw J.K. Dobbins last year, especially toward the end of the year, he became the starter. And we all knew once they drafted J.K. Dobbins in the second round, we knew that he was going to eventually be the starter. I remember even saying it last year before the season started in the question from subscriber video. I expected him to be starting by the end of the year. And that's exactly what happened with J.K. Dobbins. He ended up starting by the end of the year. So, like... In a, in a Ravens team that run, runs the ball so much, how could their, none of their running backs, especially after what they did last year, even what J.K. Dobbins did last year as a rookie, as a rookie in limited playing time, how can he not even be in the top 10 on a team that you know is going to run the ball and they're going to run the ball successfully? Anyway, like I said, this is where the list are getting a little bit shaky for me. Number eight, Chris Carson from the Seattle Seahawks. He ain't bad, but I mean... As far as projections, 
what we're projecting for the 2021-2022 season. Okay. Number nine, Josh Jacobs from the Raiders. I like him. Very physical guy. Physical running back. Love him in the red zone, too. But projections, he, he's projected over a J.K. I don't, I don't know about that one, baby. Number 10, a backup running back, Kareem Hunt for the Cleveland Browns. See, this is where it definitely gets loopy. You put Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt both in the top 10. The, the Browns starter and their backup running back, both ahead of the Ravens potential starter in J.K. Dobbins. Nick Chubb, okay, cool. But Kareem Hunt, too? What? Mm, yeah, no. Uh, Austin Eckler from the Chargers. He's cool. I like him. I believe he was an undrafted rookie free agent, and he's obviously made it. But still, mm -mm. 12, Ezekiel Elliott from the Cowboys. Based off of his history, not based off of last year. Last year was a little bit rough for him, but he's still nice. And that Cowboys offensive line, they got to get some guys back. They got to get some guys healthy. Um, but this one is debatable. Ezekiel Elliott is debatable. Because uh, maybe they feel like with, with Dak Prescott, he'll open up the game for Ezekiel Elliott because they obviously didn't have Dak Prescott last year because he was hurt. But now Dak Prescott coming back, they'll be able to throw the ball that much more and that much more, that much better. Uh, so the running game should benefit because of that. So Ezekiel Elliott, okay. Number 13, David Montgomery from the Bears. Nice, nice, but again, this goes back to what I'm saying. The Ravens run the ball so well and so effectively. How could you not have a J.K. Dobbin? Number 14, Joe Mixon from the Bengals. Mixon is bad, man. He is a bad dude, bad in a good way. Uh, he is nice, nice running back. Uh, he is part of the heart of that Bengals team. Um, but mm, just based off of what he did alone to the Baltimore Ravens last year, and basically what, really what he didn't do to them, uh, you got to put J.K. above. Moving on, Antonio Gibson from the Washington football team. Boy, he mm, he would he tore the Ravens up last year. I know this is not just based off of I'm just thinking about these guys since the Ravens played them, but he's nice. He's And what, what I think is the best attribute about Antonio Gibson is, is him catching passes out of the backfield. Him on those screens. He is mean with them screens. Uh, but you, uh, he's he's above JK too. Uh, I'm going to go with a no. Jonathan Taylor. Again, nice. He's nice. He is a rookie last year. Did his thing, man. Uh, and, and he led the league, or led the, yeah, led the league as, as far as a rookie in, in rush yards. Nice. He's on a really good team. So that one, that's debatable too but again I, I look back to the way the ravens run the ball so but that one's debatable melvin gordon from the broncos melvin gordon from the broncos at 17 so he's what nine spots ahead of J james robinson from the jacksonville jaguars super underrated guy super underrated guy Obviously, Trevor Lawrence, I, I could see how they could rank him against a uh, uh, higher than J.K. Dobbins only because of expectation because a rookie running back, I mean, excuse me, a rookie quarterback, you're going to want to ease him in. I mean, he's going to be the starter from week one, so he's not going to really be eased in. But the way that you play a rookie quarterback, depending on your team now, um, you're going to want to throw him in the fire. But at the same time, you want that running back to take pressure off of him. So they, they have uh, James Robinson. They drafted uh, Travis uh, Etienne. I forgot how to say his last name. My apologies. But and they said they plan him at wide receiver, too. So he's going to be really a weapon. But I, I so I can understand this. one. So he's going to help take pressure off of Trevor Lawrence. So I would expect him to have a, a, a big workload, a significant workload. So that, that one's fine. Number 19, Miles Sanders from the Eagles. He was cool. He was cool. He even broke a long one on the Baltimore Ravens, so they got first-hand experience. But whether it's going to be Joe Flacco or Jalen Hurts, um, he's going to have a significant workload. He will. But, um, again, this one right here, number 20, Najee Harris. This guy has not played an NFL snap and I know that he was the best running back in college football last year to do. He loves hurling over people. That's his specialty. So you know when Madden 22 comes out, his X factor is going to be hurling people. It's good. That's what it's going to be. But for you to project for a team, like this is where you, you really know. I mean, we already 
told you how the list was kind of kooky a little while back, but this is where you definitely know it's like, what? A team that never ran the ball in the Pittsburgh Steelers. You all of a sudden project this running back who hasn't touched the NFL football yet. You project him to be a, a better running back, have a better season than a team that runs the ball like nobody else runs the ball on a team that really upgraded their offensive line on a team that even if they didn't upgrade their offensive line, you know they were still going to run the ball. And you, you, you project this, this guy, Najee Harris, to have a better season or be a better running back than a guy who's played in the NFL, has NFL experience, and is on a team that has broken all sorts of rushing records. Yeah, no. Number 21, Tony Pollard from the Dallas Cowboys. So you, you even ranked a backup running back again. Another backup. Another backup running back over Jake. <laughs> Y'all see what I'm talking about? Number 22, Devin Singletary from the Bills. I like him, man. I, I, I like him. He's a little troublemaker, man. He's, tr he's low to the ground, but he's fast. Well, that, that boy can go. Uh, another, I didn't even know they had him on the list, too. Travis Etienne from the Jaguar. I didn't even know he was on his list. I didn't even know he was on this list. Wow. I thought Najee Harris was the only rookie that was on this list. You really put him on the list too? Over <laughs> yo, boy, y'all tripping, man. Boy, y'all tripping. I know they trolling with this one, man. They got it. There's, there's nothing else that could possibly explain any of it. It ain't nothing but a troll now, man. Twenty-four, Javante Williams, uh, in front of Denver Broncos. I, I honestly do not know anything about his game. Oh, he's a rookie. Well, let me read that description. 76 broken tackles on just 157 carries. This past season was by far the highest rate of any back we have recorded over a single season of college. So he's another rookie. And the, over J.K. D PFF, man. What? <laughs> this is great. That's why I ain't know nothing about his game, because he's just from college. Number 25, Ronald Jones from the Bucks. Ronald Jones is cool. He's like a uh, super quiet running back, man. Uh, you don't really hear much about him. Um, but I'm sure Bucks fans know about him, but still. And then, of course, 26 is J.K. Dobbins. Then after him, 27, Naeem Hines, uh, also from the Colts. He was a backup guy, um, but did get, I think he was their punt returner or kick returner, one of those two. But he got significant playing time. But him being behind J.K., I think this is the first backup that they actually put behind J.K. Dobbins. Mm, that makes sense. Number 28, Clyde's Ed, Clyde edwards Elia. Uh, we know him. He uh, I, A lot of Chiefs fans, a lot of NFL people didn't really like this pick for them uh, a couple years ago. Um, and I, th I thought he did pretty good. Uh, was he ready to be that guy at the running back for the Chiefs? Uh, maybe, maybe not. But he still made some plays. And he's very, very, he's a very strong runner. Very, very strong runner. You will look at him and look at his size and be like, okay, maybe he's a speed back. He could probably catch some passes out of the backfield, but he ain't breaking no tackle. No, this dude be carrying piles, man. Um, but him being on the Chiefs, that's going to take away from his running because they throw that ball everywhere, uh, at least when they got an offensive line. Number 29, James White from the Patriots. Yeah, he always catching passes out of the backfield. That's his thing. Uh, he is the true scat back, uh, but he, he's nice, man. He well, For what Patriots do, their system, he is perfect for it. Uh, number 30, Chase Edmonds from the Cardinals. Uh, number 31, oh, I was about to say Kenyon Drake from the Cardinals. I forgot that he left, and now he's on the Raiders. So, okay. So, 31, Kenyon Drake from the Raiders, and then 32, Mark Ingram from the Texans. See, okay, now I'm, I'm, see, now it's not even just about J.K. Dobbins. This has become about Gus Edwards, too, because I didn't know. I first, when I first saw this list uh, yesterday, I, I glanced through some of it. I didn't look at, give a detailed look at the entire thing until just now. Um, so, I was thinking, okay. They're ranking the top 32 backs heading into 2021-2022 season. So I'm thinking, okay, they're going to pick one running back from every team. But no, they pick two running backs from the Raiders, two running backs from the Colts, uh, two running backs from the Cardinals. They even picked Mark Ingram. We love Mark Ingram. We love him. 
You know we do, especially as Ravens fans. No Saints fans still always going to have love for him, too. Love Mark Ingram. But to rank him above a Gus Edwards, to rank uh, actually a lot of these guys, especially in the back half, uh, above a Gus Edwards, are they crazy? That, mm-mm. Uh, uh, what? To Mark Ingram. That, like, they, they, because I, I really thought that they, it was not going to be any double dipping on this list. I really didn't. Because, again, it's 32 people, so automatically 32 running backs, you think, or oh, I think 32 teams, but no, they did a lot of double dipping. So, for you to have a lot of these guys, again, especially in the back half, over a Gus, but, I mean, it makes sense because you have J.K. Dobbins at 26, so your list is already kerflunkled. And that's not even a word, but uh, this ain't even a list. So the list is already kerflunkled, so it should not be a surprise to anybody that Gus Edwards isn't on here. Because the list is what the list is. Uh, and it's, it's just a big yikes all around. But these lists are fun because uh, they continue to give the players plenty of opportunities to prove them wrong. So just like PFF is when it comes to their mind when they made this list, I'm out.